When we think of criminals, the image that often comes to mind. There is a small war underway on a street in Philadelphia tonight. There was gunshots, thousands of rounds of bullets from the police. Police moved in with tear gas and water cannon. They wanted to kill our children. I had recommended to use an explosive entry device. The house shook. Smoke was coming in. So we knew they dropped the bomb on us. In reality, some of the most infamous felons and killers defy these stereotypes. They're not the gnarled freaks with bushy mustaches and bulging guts. Instead, they possess a charm and beauty that can be disarming. These individuals have used their attractiveness and charisma to their advantage, luring victims into their grasp and sometimes blending seamlessly into their communities. Some of them have even amassed followings of admirers, including devoted groupies, despite their sentences behind bars. Shockingly, a few have even garnered online fan bases, attracting people who seem to care less about the heinous crimes they've committed. In this video, we delve into the world of attractive criminals, seemingly affable felons, and charming lawbreakers who have left a trail of devastation in their wake. In the pursuit of justice, our legal system faces a significant challenge inherent in human involvement. While the courtroom provides a structured environment aimed at fairness, the unavoidable reality is that decisions are made by people. Whether it's the prosecution, defense, judge, or jury, each individual brings their own set of biases and predispositions to the table. Uh, you, sir, in my mind, are a very evil individual. You are clearly a monster without any conscience whatsoever, and you are someone who is a danger to society and should never be allowed free. Accordingly, it is the sentence of this court with regards to the second degree murder that you be committed to the Michigan Department of Corrections to serve a minimum of 100 years to a maximum of 200 years. These biases stem from various sources, including personal experiences, cultural backgrounds, and societal influences. They can affect how evidence is interpreted, how arguments are perceived, and ultimately, how verdicts are reached. Despite efforts to mitigate bias through procedures like jury selection and legal standards, human nature remains a central factor in the administration of justice. To address this inherent flaw, it becomes imperative to delve into the complexities of the human mind, understanding the psychological Psychological mechanisms that underlie bias is crucial for devising strategies to counteract its effects. This involves exploring concepts such as cognitive biases, implicit associations, and social conditioning, all of which shape our perceptions and decision-making processes. Furthermore, fostering awareness and education about bias within the legal profession and among the general public is essential. Two psychologists, Seagal and Ostrov, delved into the intriguing realm of attractiveness and its impact on jury decision-making. Their study aimed to explore whether a jury would be swayed to give a less severe punishment to an attractive criminal. And based on the decision of the jury, I sentence you in count one and count four to life in prison without the possibility of parole. In counts two and three, I sentence you to life without the possibility of parole. However, that's with a firearm, discharge, including charging death, which means hopefully that no matter what happens with the legislature, no matter what we decide on life or death in your case, you will never, ever be released from prison. To conduct their research, Segal and Ostrovi recruited 120 participants and presented each with a card featuring a woman named Barbara Helms, along with details of the crime she supposedly committed. Barbara Helms served as the focal point of the study. Participants were divided into three groups. One group received a photograph of an attractive woman accused of burglary. Another group received a photograph of an unattractive woman accused of the same crime. And the third group received no photograph at all. Before proceeding, all 
all participants were asked to rate Barbara's attractiveness based on the provided photograph, ensuring consensus on the intended perception of attractiveness. Subsequently, participants were tasked with assigning a prison sentence to Barbara, ranging from 1 to 15 years. The results were telling. The group presented with the attractive photo of Barbara imposed an average sentence of 2.8 years, significantly lower than the 5.20 years handed down by the group shown the unattractive photo. Interestingly, the group provided with no photo at all also leaned towards a harsher punishment, with an average sentence of 5.10 years years. This study sheds light on the subtle yet impactful influence of attractiveness on jury decision-making processes. It suggests that individuals may unconsciously assign more lenient punishments to attractive defendants. Now, let's delve into some parallel real-life cases. In 2015, a 30-year-old American teacher named Jennifer Victor made headlines worldwide, but not for anything related to academics. She found herself in hot water because of her involvement with three of her teenage students, all aged 17. Now, while 17 might be legal in some countries, it's a no-go zone in the U.S. But why did this story go global? Well, buckle up. Firstly, in Russia, where the legal age of consent is 16, they couldn't wrap their heads around why Jennifer got slammed with a 22-year sentence. A petition on Russian social media exploded, with over 41,000 signatures demanding her release. Imagine that. Then, there's the other twist. People couldn't stop talking about Jennifer's appearance. They were all like, whoa, she's one good-looking teacher. Her image went viral faster than a cat video on the internet. But when she faced the judge and got hit with that hefty 22-year sentence, her laughter turned to tears. Yup, she'll be well into her 50s by the time she's out. Talk about a roller coaster of emotions. Then there's the tale of Jeremy Meek. You know, this guy has sparked this hashtag Felon Crush Friday. His wife is reportedly furious about all of the attention, and she's not alone. So many wondering this morning, is it all too much? The unexpected heartthrob of 2014. The Stockton Police Department posts a routine mugshot on their Facebook page. Nothing out of the ordinary, right? Well, not quite. This mugshot belonged to Jeremy Meeks, a dude charged with vandalism and obstructing justice. Now, usually, these posts get a few likes, and that's it. Jeremy's mugshot went viral. We're talking over 75,000 likes, 20,000 comments, and 10,000 shares. The cops were scratching their heads, wondering why this mugshot was getting more attention than a cat playing piano. Then then it hit them. Jeremy had become a meme, dubbed as the hot mugshot guy. With his newfound internet fame, Jeremy's mom, Catherine, decided to kick off a GoFundMe campaign to bail him out, and it worked. Once he was out, Jeremy didn't just fade into obscurity. He strutted his stuff right onto the runway, becoming a bona fide model. From stealing cars and running with gangs to strutting down catwalks, Jeremy's life took a dramatic turn. And to top it all off, he's now dating the daughter of a billionaire, Chloe Green, who owns Top Show. Talk about a rag to Rich's story with almost 2 million followers on Instagram, Jeremy's living the high life, swapping street for fashion fame. All right, let's talk about Elisa Bath Frick and her unexpected moment in the spotlight back in 2014. So picture this, a mugshot that catches everyone's attention with the caption, Big Eyes, Big Trouble. Elisa, just 18 at the time, found herself in hot water in North Carolina for possession of Xanax. Now, getting arrested isn't usually a glamorous affair, but Elisa's mugshot sparked a whole new conversation. While rocking the classic orange jumpsuit, many folks on the internet couldn't help but notice how good she looked in it. Her big eyes and overall attractiveness made her mug shot go viral faster than you can say internet sensation. In another interesting case in 2010, the internet found itself captivated by the striking mugshot of a woman from Arkansas, Sarah Seawright, who quickly earned the nickname Prison Bay. Sarah's run-in with the law stemmed from missing a court appearance related to a careless driving charge, but her rap sheet didn't stop there. She had previous accusations including kidnapping, robbery, battery, hindering prosecution, and tampering with evidence. Despite her legal troubles, Sarah garnered a legion of admirers on social media. Fans couldn't help but swoon over her, with one Twitter user jokingly saying they'd apologize and buy her Chipotle even if she stabbed them nine times. Another wondered if Sarah had a glam squad to keep her looking fabulous behind bars. Embracing her newfound fame, Sarah invited her Facebook followers to join her escapades on Snapchat, where she reportedly shared a video expressing defiance towards the judge. The big question remains, will Sarah's mugshot pave the way for a modeling career similar to Jeremy Meeks's story? Only time will tell. Let's talk about Angela Coates and her unexpected rise to fame in 2014. So Angela isn't just your average criminal, she's also a glamour model with stunning hair, eyebrows to envy, and luscious lips that caught everyone's attention.
attention. One day, Angela found herself in a bit of trouble, getting arrested for disorderly conduct in DeKalb County, Georgia. But here's where it gets interesting. Angela's mugshot didn't just disappear into police records. Nope, it went viral faster than you can say cheese. Twitter went wild, with folks retweeting her mugshot left and right, showering her with compliments about her looks. Some even offered to chip in for her bail, which was a mere $360. Talk about the power of good looks, right? Turns out Angela was released the same day she was arrested, claiming she was wrongly accused. Maybe that explains her smirk in the mugshot, huh? But even with all the drama, people couldn't help but admire her beauty, earning her the title of model criminal on Twitter. And there's Sean Corey, another guy whose mugshot became the talk of the town in 2014. So picture this. The Santa Cruz Police Department posts Sean's mugshot, and suddenly the internet goes wild. Now why all the fuss? Well, Sean had a certain charm about him. Girls swooned over his dreadlocks and captivating eyes. But the reason behind his arrest was straight out of a comedy sketch. It was Halloween night, and Sean encountered a man dressed up as a Fox News reporter, complete with a costume and all. But instead of just playing along, he took things a step further. He shouts, I hate Fox News, and whacks a guy with a tennis racket. Yeah, you heard that right. Now, why he had a tennis racket or why he chose that costume, nobody knows. But here's the kicker. The guy he hit with the racket turned out to be all right. With his mugshot making the round on the internet, one headline even claimed that Jeremy Meeks, the famous hot mugshot guy, had some competition. Now, Sean might not have millions of followers or a billionaire girlfriend, but there's no denying his good-looking mugshot went viral in a heartbeat. Next up is Kenneth Bianchi. Born in Rochester, New York on May 22, 1951, Kenneth Bianchi's life took a dark turn as he became known as the Hillside Strangler. Raised as an adopted child, his early years were marked by deceit and health struggles. Diagnosed with seizures at a young age. His descent into infamy began when he relocated to California and joined forces with his cousin, Angelo Bueno. Together, they terrorized the region for nearly two years, preying on women under the guise of authority, posing as fake police officers to lure their victims. During their trial, Bianchi attempted to evade responsibility, claiming to suffer from multiple personality disorder, blaming his alter ego, Steve Walker. Yet, evidence suggested manipulation rather than genuine mental illness, with psychology books found in his possession, hinting at deception. Ultimately, Bianchi's facade crumbled, and he confessed to his crimes. He was convicted of multiple murders and sentenced to spend the rest of his life behind bars. All right, let's dive into the story of Jennifer Jensen, a 23-year-old who made waves back in 2011. So, picture this. Jennifer gets booked by the police, and they snap her mugshot. Now, usually, mugshots don't make people look their best, right? Well, not in Jennifer's case. Her mugshot spread like wildfire across the internet, all because she looked absolutely stunning in it. People couldn't stop gushing about her, calling her breathtaking, and even tagging her as a hottie on the official Florida arrest database. Talk about making an impression. Now, we don't know what Jennifer was arrested for, but one thing's for sure. She didn't seem too worried about it in her mugshot. Maybe it was for something small. Who knows? It's rare to see someone looking so flawless in a mugshot. People couldn't help but wonder what Jennifer looks like in regular photos if she can pull off such a flawless look even when she's facing the law. Her viral mugshot had everyone scrambling to find out more about her, but it seems like her record remains a mystery for now. Richard Ramirez, dubbed the Night Stalker. Well, it's still a crazy scene outside of Judge Tynan's courtroom here in downtown Los Angeles. The uh, hearing, the final sentencing hearing for Richard Ramirez is now finally over, and as you said, the judge said he could find no mitigating circumstances. Uh, in other words, he could find no reason to not accept the jury's recommendation. That is, guilty on all counts, and the death penalty in the gas chamber at San Quentin on all counts. He was like something out of a dark Hollywood movie. But here's the thing. His good looks weren't just for show. Behind that handsome facade lurked a cold-blooded killer responsible for 13 murders and countless rapes. Yeah, he was as brutal as they come. But here's where it gets even more bizarre. Despite his monstrous crimes, Ramirez had his fair share of female admirers while he was locked up. I'm talking about fans who were so infatuated with him that one even walked down the aisle with him. But as they say, all good things must come to an end. Ramirez met his demise in prison in 2013, leaving behind a legacy that's as chilling as it is captivating. Coming next is the infamous Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy, the notorious serial killer, wasn't your average murderer. With his charm turned up to 11 and looks that could make anyone swoon, he was like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Bundy had this uncanny ability to attract women, especially on college campuses campuses 
where he prowled. But here's the thing about Bundy. He wasn't just relying on his natural charisma. Oh no, he had a few tricks up his sleeve. Literally, Bundy often sported a fake arm sling or a cast on his arm or leg, using these props to gain sympathy and trust from unsuspecting victims. Once he had their attention and their guard was down, he'd strike with brutal force, using weapons like pipes or crowbars to incapacitate his victims before whisking them away in his car. It's a chilling reminder that evil doesn't always look like a monster. Sometimes it wears a charming smile and carries a fake cast. In the mid-60s, Paul Schmid earned the chilling moniker the Pied Piper of Tucson for his horrifying crimes. Seduction was his game, but behind his charming facade lay a cold-hearted killer who claimed the lives of three young girls in Arizona. Despite being described as intelligent, good-looking, and charismatic by those who knew him, Schmid's charm couldn't save him from facing justice. In 1966, he was convicted of murder and sentenced to death. However, fate had its own plans for him. In a twist of irony, Schmid met his end in prison in 1975 when he was stabbed to death. It's a sobering reminder that even the most charming individuals can harbor the darkest of secrets. Next is Paul John, known as the Casanova Killer. Knowles carved a chilling legacy with his blend of rugged good looks, charm, and impeccable fashion sense. Under the guise of the alias Daryl Golden, he prowled the streets, using his charisma to ensnare unsuspecting victims. However, beneath his suave exterior lurked a depraved individual with a penchant for violence. Once he gained the trust of his victims, Knowles would unleash his darkest impulses. Rape and murder became his twisted trademarks, leaving a trail of devastation in his wake. His crimes knew no bounds as he targeted women in heinous acts of violence. During the tumultuous year of 1974, Knowles unleashed a reign of terror unlike any other. With calculated precision, he claimed the lives of at least 18 people, each falling victim to his savage brutality. Some met their demise during sexual assaults, while others became casualties of his indiscriminate rage. The authorities finally caught up with Knowles, but not before he engaged in a deadly struggle with police officers. In the violent confrontation that ensued, Knowles met his end, his reign of terror coming to a dramatic and final conclusion. H. H. Holmes, also known as Herman Mudgett, stands as one of the earliest documented serial killers in history. Despite his sinister deeds, Holmes possessed a facade of charm, charisma, and good looks that belied his dark nature. With a penchant for deception, he led a double life as a scam artist and grifter, often operating under the alias H. H. Holmes. In 1893, Holmes committed his most notorious crime by murdering the owner of a pharmacy in Chicago. Seizing the opportunity, he assumed ownership of the establishment and transformed it into a sinister labyrinth disguised as a hotel. Within the confines of his macabre establishment, Holmes carried out his heinous acts, stalking and murdering countless victims. The exact number remains unknown, with estimates suggesting he may have taken the lives of as many as 200 individuals. Ultimately, Holmes's reign of terror came to an end when he was apprehended and subsequently executed in 1896. Estibaliz Carranza was once a bright and talented student, excelling in her studies and even mastering the German language in record time. However, tragically, her intelligence and beauty proved futile in her case. Known as the Ice Cream Killer, Estibaliz's crimes were centered around her ice cream parlor, adding a chilling twist to her already gruesome tale. Her descent into violence began with the demise of her marriage, fueled by frustration over her husband's refusal to fulfill her desire for a child. When divorce didn't seem like enough, she resorted to the ultimate solution, murder. Storing his body in the basement of her parlor, she moved on to her next victim. Lastly, Joran Van Der Sloot. He likes to prey upon young female tourists. Joran Van Der Sloot, he's incredibly charming. He's cordial, he's funny. He knows what his targets want to hear. Conning and manipulation. If you're psychopathic, you see other people as instruments. You just want to get what you want. Joran van der Sloot, born on August 6, 1987, in Arnhem, Netherlands, hailed from a family with legal and artistic backgrounds. Initially, he appeared to be a model student, excelling academically and shining as a star athlete in soccer and tennis. However, at the tender age of 17, his life took a dark turn when he became embroiled in a criminal investigation following 
regarding the disappearance of an 18-year-old woman. Although arrested, he was ultimately released due to insufficient evidence. Three years later, in 2008, Joran relocated to Thailand under the guise of pursuing a business education. However, he abandoned his studies and instead purchased a restaurant named Sawaday Cup. Unbeknownst to many, this establishment served as a front for his illicit activities, masquerading as a modeling agency while facilitating a prostitution ring. Operating under the alias Murphy Jenkins for safety, Joran's nefarious deeds were brought to light through undercover operations conducted by individuals like Patrick van der Eem, working on behalf of crime reporter Peter de Vries in the Netherlands. In 2010, the lifeless body of 21-year-old Stephanie Flores was discovered in a hotel suite in Lima, Peru, registered under the name of Joran van der Sloot. A week later, Joran was apprehended, found in possession of incriminating evidence, including a laptop, foreign currency, and blood-stained clothing. Just two days after his arrest, he confessed to the murder of Stephanie. Subsequently, Joran faced charges of extortion and wire fraud, but the gravity of his crimes did not end there. He was ultimately convicted of qualified murder and simple robbery, marking a grim chapter in his already troubled history. Feel free to share in the comments which of these cases intrigued you the most. Don't miss out on more fascinating content by liking and subscribing to the channel. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the one displayed on your screen now for even more captivating stories. Click, and I'll catch you in the next video.